How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about gears and a little bit of the setup and what I do to prep before I go into a re-gear. Now, your Jeep may be different and that's what I'm going to explain today. Um, if you have an eight and a quarter, the backlash setup is totally different than what uh, a common Dana axle would be, um, like a Dana 44 and up. Uh, you need a special tool for the eight and quarter. You can get them on Amazon. A lot of those have different variations. For, for example, this is a Dana 30 carrier. You're gonna need a new carrier with your gear set. If you have 355s or 321s, if you have 373 and up, you don't need a new carrier. The only difference is uh, the new carrier is thicker than the old one, so it'll accept the ring gear and put it in spec. Uh, I know a lot of people sell uh, thicker gears that you can put on the stock carrier, but I just go ahead and buy a new carrier. Now, what I want to talk about is some Dana 30s, depends what generation it is, will have the shims behind the bearings. And the next generation axles that I'll be working on have the shims in front. Get a kit, you should get, you know, everything to do it with, you know, your ultra gray RTV, the little brush, Loctite. Um, you should get your seals and your bolts and uh, new races and uh, bearings. You should get a whole kit that redoes both axles. So a lot of people are asking what backlash was and how you set it up and why it needs to be in between because there's a certain measurement that needs to be in between uh, the play that allows oil to go in between the gears. That's pretty much what backlash is. And pinion depth is pretty much how deep or shallow the pinion is to the ring gear. You have the ring gear and the pinion and this allows you know, the pinion depth. This will see how close and how far away it is. So you got your pinion depth and you got your backlash and that will, you know, your pinion depth goes this way and your backlash goes this way. So basically that's the two numbers that you need to get right in order for your axle to stay together and not blow apart. Um, it's just a lot of patience and uh, a lot of time when you're doing it yourself because you want to do it right. Um, including you know, your crush sleeve. A lot of people don't know what to do with the crush sleeve, how to set it up. You're gonna see this in the video, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown. When you do the crush sleeve, you do that last. So basically what you do is when, you, when you're setting up your, your, your backlash and your pinion depth, you wanna start with you know, whatever you have and you go ahead and throw your pinion in there and tighten it up till you have a little bit of resistance. You don't use the, 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 the crush sleeve and then you go ahead and throw your carrier in there, tighten it down a little bit and then run uh, your backlash, see what it's at. Then if it's in between spec, you wanna go ahead and run your pattern. Um, a lot of people are confused about that. Yeah, you don't use your crush sleeve until after you're done. Um, if you have a crush sleeve eliminator, um, you use it you know, when you're done, when you're ready to put the thing together. Another thing is when you get gears, they are covered in oil. You wanna spray them down with brake clean. And another thing you wanna do is take a file and go around this ring gear and make sure everything's flat and make sure you spray brake clean in these holes because grease can split a ring gear or it can mess up the torque settings and stuff like that. So make sure you spray all these parts with brake cleaner before you install that um, on your carrier and all that stuff. Uh, basically this is all it is, not as intimidating as people make it. It's just a couple ring gears, some pinions and uh, your setup stuff. Comes with the new bolts, uh, your crush sleeve, you have new pinion seal, the inner seals, the the shims. Um, and then, like I said, you have your bearings and races. I'm in a box like that, and it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. It's just setting it up is what people has a problem with. Now, what I do recommend is writing on the back what these are for when they're in the box, because you might get them mixed up. And I keep this box closed. Honestly, the 44 or the eight and a quarter, I put it clear across the garage. Um, and what I do is open this up and I measure these shims um, and see what they are. And I take a black marker and I write on what them shims are. So basically, before I even start the re-gear, I spray all this stuff down with brake clean. I open everything, lay it out, 
and write on something that I know that this is the Dana 30 stuff and the eight and a quarter or the 44 or whatever you're working on. And then I go ahead and measure my shims and I already have that stuff done because that way you're not screwing around with all this stuff out. So when you go to uh, add a shim, you can go ahead and look and do your math and all that stuff. So basically, that's what I do to get stuff prepped and ready um, to make sure everything is in a clean area and where you can see it. And honestly, I've never had a problem with uh, uh, Revolution gears or anything like that, uh, not sending anything. And uh, like I said, these are really good gears. Um, they are Circle K gears. I don't know if I can get you in there. Wipe it off. I don't know if you can see it, but it is Circle K gears on both. Um, they're really good quality gears. So I just wanted to cover a little bit of things that you should do before you go ahead and re-gear. If you haven't seen the video on what gears to buy and which ones I recommend and which ones to stay away from, I have a video on my channel. I have a video of the special tools that you're going to need. Um, also, you want to go back and watch that video. This video I wanted to cover on what to do uh, before you re-gear because uh, I don't want to waste time in the re-gear video showing you guys this stuff when it's already going to be done. and You're going to be like, wow, I didn't spray this, blah, 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 and stuff like that. So spray everything down with brake clean, especially ring gears and the bolt holes. Uh, Mark everything to where it goes, like Dana 30, 44, or eight and a quarter. Measure your shims, take a black marker, and write the size on that. And when it comes to your carrier, if you have new spider gears, you wanna go ahead and throw them in. I'm gonna reuse my spider gears because I only got 30,000 to 40,000 miles on my Jeep. There's uh, nothing wrong with it. So I'm gonna be reusing the spider gears for that, and it comes with a new roll pin, and it actually comes with new ring gear bolts. So basically you have everything you need, um, get everything prepped. Important thing is when you get your gear job done, there is a break-in period. A lot of people say there isn't, but there actually is a break-in period to ensure that your gears are going to last. Um, so it's a very slow process, but it's worth it. It'll make your gears last. So I want to make this short little video for you guys to explain everything, uh, to give you an idea what you're getting into and there's different variations, but it still applies the same. So, you know, the two things that we're looking for is good backlash and good pinion depth and a good pattern on your ring gear. So that's the things where we're shooting for. And like I said, there's variations. You just have to take your axle apart and see how it is. See if the, you know, the shims are behind the bearing or on the outside of the bearing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.